So finally, let us go to the problem of clean trials and how bounded problems can be used to model them. Let's say we have some information xt about an individual patient t and we wish to administer a treatment a t. Now when we administer a treatment, we'll do some outcome and we want to maximize expected utility according to whatever definition we like. Now, a way to model this is through what is called the contextual bounded problem where time t observes some side information xt then we play an action a t and then we will obtain a reward and a distribution of the reward given the action and uh, the side information is distribution depends on only the action and the side information and of course the problem parameter theta an interesting case is the linear value problem where your actions are finite and the observations come from a finite dimensional Euclidean space and there are n different parameter vectors each vector has the same dimensionality as observations so that when you play action i a then the reward you get has a mean equal to the dot product between theta a and x and it's normally distributed with variance one yeah. so that's a standard linear bounded problem of course, in something like clinical trials, you don't observe a real number, you observe some kind of uh, positive or negative outcome. So you can model this in the same way, but instead of having just a reward that is normally distributed, you have an outcome y, which can be 0 or 1, and it has a Bernoulli distribution with parameter that is defined in terms of the logit function of the inner product between uh, theta a and x. Okay. Now the reward can be some function that depends on the action and the outcome. So that if, for example, there is some drug which is cheaper than the other, then you have a lower utility for higher utility for using the cheaper drug, uh, given the same outcome. And then for good outcomes, you have a high uh, utility, and for bad outcomes, you have a lower utility. So for example, you can have a cheap treatment with zero cost, uh, doing nothing, and you have a treatment with high cost, which uh, costs 100. And you can have outcome which is uh, zero, which, is, uh, which gives you a reward of zero, and you can have an outcome which is good, which gives you a reward of one. So then you could define your reward function to be simply, let's say, a times 0 0.1 plus y times 10. Yeah. So it's more important to have a good outcome than to have a cheap action, um, and so on. So you could define any reward function you like. So a lot of times you care about experiment design at this one stage simply because it's difficult to design uh, experiments for more than one stage. In this case, we have some initial belief and our start information is about the outcomes of many, many trials. So we simultaneously take actions for many patients and we observe outcomes for each one of them. Then we might not care so much about how, what happens during the trial, but we might care about our expected utility of some policy that we obtain after the trial is over. Yeah. So here this policy pi defines what we do right now during the trial and also what we do after the trial is finished. So as one example, you can think about uh, expected information gain. What does this mean? It means the expected uh, KL divergence between our prior and posterior. So we start from some prior and according to our prior, there's a probability for observing different outcomes given different actions and observations. And the interesting quality is this scale divergence, where we condition the prior on the new information. So when this is high, then we have lots of information. When this is low, we have no information. So by solving this optimization problem, by maximizing over policies, we're trying to find a policy that maximizes our expected information gain, so it gives us as much information as possible about the problem. That is useful to do sometimes, especially when uh, you really don't know what kind of experiment you'd like to do next. So one interesting characteristic is this. Another idea is to maximize the expected utility of the final policy. So let's say you want to choose the policy now, so at the second stage you have a policy that is optimal in some sense. So you define some kind of quality metric, like a reward, uh, which basically could be simply whether or not somebody is cured. Uh, and you want to 
find now your policy uh, to do an experiment so that at the second stage you can find uh, let's say a treatment that is the best possible treatment so all goes down to define what this is so this is like the optimal policy given your belief that is fixed so specifically we we'll consider policies that are only considering the current uh, action and current uh, observations so then you can write expected reward as being simply the reward times probability of the outcome a given action and uh, observation times the probability of the action given the observation so this is incorrect it should be the other way around and times the probability of observing x at any stage in the future so for any one state's problem um, you can think about a general way of doing it. First, you have to have some model for generating data, which it can be a randomly selected model. And we select some decision-making algorithm, lambda, that has some parameters, and some performance measure review that we measure at the end of the experiment. So then what we would like to do is to generate data from this uh, model and measure the performance of our algorithm on this data. Yeah. Can do this many, many times, so we get an average performance. And so, as an example, if you are doing some hypothesis testing, your algorithm is doing hypothesis testing, you have a policy for generating data, fine. You measure how well this policy does in generating the data so that in the end your hypothesis test will give you the correct answer as much as possible. So, there's not much experiment design for doing that. Uh, 